Good morning, guys. This will be our pre-teen Sunday school class, and we're going to keep going in the book of Psalms, and we'll be in chapter 4. Uh, this is not a, a long chapter. It's eight verses like the last one. Um, but this chapter is a chapter about trusting in God, and this is uh, David here. He's writing again. He says in verse 1, Hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. And there, there's a lot in this verse. Uh, he says, Hear me when I call, God of my righteousness. And you begin to think about that. And we, we know that we have no righteousness of ourselves, right? Uh, this righteousness that we have is, is from God. It's, it's because of God that there's any righteousness in us. Um, you can go over and read in the book of Genesis and it, it talks about Abraham there. And he says that he believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. So our, our belief in God is what gives us this righteousness, not, not uh, trying not to sin, uh, not doing uh, work, if you'd have it that way, not going to church, not... Uh, praying for somebody, not doing all, just the many things you could think of that would be good things to do. Any uh, good works will will not give you righteousness. Um, we need to do good things. We need to be good people. Sure we do. Uh, but that won't give us righteousness. The only righteousness that we can get, it, it comes from God himself by our belief in him. And if you, if you don't believe in God, it doesn't matter what you do. I, I don't care how many good works you do. I don't care if, if you give every Sunday all of your check to the church. Uh, it doesn't matter what you do. Without the belief in God, uh, you have no righteousness. So we see here that David understands this. He understands that God has brought him this righteousness. And says, Thou hast enlarged me. Uh, you know, God's taking care of David. He takes care of us every day. It says, when I was in distress, uh, when we have trouble, God takes care of us just like he does when we don't have trouble. And and I'm thankful for that, that uh, no matter if, if it's in the good times or if it's in the bad times, God is still God. You know, uh, there's a little song that, that talks about him being God on the mountain and then God in the valley. And wherever we're at in our state of our life, uh, the Bible says in one place, if we have food and raiment, therewith be content. Um, a lot of times we we don't want to be content with just food and raiment, but I look around at uh, all the things that I have, and, and man, I'm blessed beyond measure. Uh, don't get me wrong, I work for those things. Uh, but who do you think gave me the ability to work? Who do you think gave me a job and, and lets me get up every morning? Um, it, it's God that does those things. If it wasn't for God, I, I wouldn't be able to even breathe. So we got to remember that God is the one who, who takes care of us. He says, have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. There's many times that we ask God to have mercy on us because, uh, man, we just mess up, don't we? I mean, we make mistakes all the time. and It doesn't matter how good we, we try to be. There's this warfare inside of us. There's the, there's the flesh and, and there's the spirit there. And, and, and they war against each other. And, and this warfare, it's something that we have to cry out to God over. Just like David says here, have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. God, help me when I am in need. Because uh, and when I sin and I come short, that's, that's how I want to be able to get back to God, right? be able to get back to the place I need to be where I just cry out to him and, and ask him to hear my prayer and I'll try to do better next time. We forget that. I think a lot of times um, people, you know, you'll preach a message or you'll hear a message, whatever, and, uh, you know, we'll say, well, you know, let's come to the altar. Let, let's pray about it. Uh, you know, th whatever's bothering you. Maybe you've been out and sin, out in the world, whatever. Whatever's bothering you. And then we get forgave for that, right? Um, but do we go back and do that same thing again? 
that that's not the way we ought to do things, right? If God's forgave you of something, that's great. God will forgive you, but leave it alone after that. We'll go on to verse 2. It says, O ye sons of men, how long will ye turn my glory into shame? And, and we could go a lot of, of different directions with that. But me reading it here and, and thinking about it, I, I think about this. I think about you. I think about each and every one of us that has been given this body that we have. And this is the body that the Lord gave us. And it's a special thing. And we always don't treat it that way, but... Hear me, I don't mean because uh, you look a certain way, your, your hair is pretty, you have your makeup done, uh, anything like that. The clothes you wear, it's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about that we are made in the very image of God. Okay? So God's glory, if you'll have it that way. And how long will we take and turn that glory into shame? How long will we do things that are not pleasing unto God? And, we can read down through David's life here if we if we looked at all of it and there's times that he messed up himself and there's times I mess up just like I, I tell you all the time uh, I mess up I guess it's every day you know um, but I want to do better I want to try to do better so how long will you turn my glory into shame, into shame? he goes on and says how long will you love vanity and seek after leasing? So how long will you care about things that are worthless, right? We, we go after money, we go after cars, we go after clothes. People go after men and women and this and that. But will these things really matter when it gets down to the end? You know, these are things, these worldly things that uh, I'm not telling you not to go out and have a good time with your friends as long as you know you're not doing anything that's that's wrong but at the same time will those things benefit you in the kingdom of heaven you know if they won't you know they're not worth a whole lot um and i know we could think of a lot of things here but what i, I really mean is you know are you saved can you help somebody else get saved you know these are the things that matters all this other stuff that we get caught up into and, and and we like to do think of just a tv show how much time and i'll talk about myself how much time i've spent just watching a tv show that i could have been doing something better for god right so he says and seek after leasing so uh leasing here just means falsehood so how long will you seek after th these false things he goes on in verse three he says but know that the lord hath set apart him that is godly for himself. So if, if you begin to look at the word here, it says set apart. Uh, we need to set ourselves apart for God. But if we do that, God sets us apart for himself, right? For his honor and his glory. All the things that we do, uh, you know, I've preached, I don't know how many messages I've taught, I don't know how many lessons. But it's nothing for me. It's it's for Jesus Christ and the Father. You know, people are not going to bow down. And I wouldn't have it anyway, let's say it that way. But people are not going to bow down to me. I wouldn't want them to do that. But they'll bow down to the Father. The, the Bible teaches me that, that in the end, that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. You know, so he's the one who gets the honor and the glory. God is the one who has set him above all things. Um, you, you can go and read back when God talks to Moses there at the, the burning bush. He says, I am that I am. God is everything, right? He, he's above all things. He's in all things. He's through all things. And not anything was made without God. So God gets all this glory. And you're set apart for him. To be a help to him and to accomplish what he wants to happen in your life. But if we don't listen to those things that God wants us to do. And we try to do things our own way. Let's, let's talk about this a minute. We do things our own way. God tells you to do something and, and you do it. But maybe you didn't do it 
the same time that God told you to. That's still sin, ain't it? Maybe God told you to do something and you changed it just a little bit. That's still sin, ain't it? The reason I tell you that is we have to be careful. You know, I, it's not hard to be a Christian. The Bible says it's hard to be a transgressor. But we make it hard on ourselves. Because I, I promise you, God just wants the best for us. The very best for us. As a parent, I've got to discipline my children. God does the same thing to me. You know, that's that's his job, is to mold me and to make me into what he wants me to be. Into what he wants you to be. He set you apart for himself. If you'll only set yourself apart. God will set you apart for himself. He says... The Lord will hear when I call unto him. David knows here if he calls upon the Lord that God's going to hear him. He says, Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. This stand in awe is like a tremble, you know, and, and I think about a fear of the Lord. I, I've heard... A lot of people say that we need to respect God, and we do. Uh, but the beginning of knowledge is fear in the Lord. And you better fear God, because He can take everything away that you've ever had. And and I think about it, and it's a terrible thought to think of. To think about any given time in your life that everything that you love, everything you hold dear, uh, can be in one car together. Everything that matters to you as far as your family. And would we not have fear for God? Um, I'd say that wouldn't be a good idea. But he says commune with your own heart. Look, look to yourself. Look inside yourself and see what can I do to be better? What can I do to be more for God? Am I really as close to God as is what I've been before, or am I slacking? Am am I am I backed up on this? We've gotten in a weird time now. You know, it's a time like we've never had in our lives where we've had to stay indoors and uh, we've had to stay away from church. And man, we get to missing one another, don't we? We we miss one another, and even being at church, I miss a lot of the, the fellowship. Uh, with one another just being able to go up and hug my brother or sister it's something i've done um, for my whole life you know since i've been a baby and you know that's something you miss but we've got to really look at ourselves right now um i i think about and i'm running out of time so i ain't gonna get all the way through this but that's all right um i think about over and you get to reading about paul and he writes there about taking the communion, right, that we do. And most times, uh, Tim will read out of that passage there, and then we'll we'll, we'll drink the, the little cup there, and, and we'll take the little wafer of unleavened bread, and we'll, we'll eat it. But you go and look at that scripture there, and it talks about examining yourself. The same thing here. Uh, commune with your own heart. Look at yourself, you know. When I look at myself, you know, when you look at yourself, are you happy with what you see? And I don't mean the outside, I mean the inside. Um, the Bible says in one place, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So, what are we looking for? What's on our mind? How are we? You know, how are you today? Are you in the place that God wants you to be? You don't have to tell me that. You don't have to tell your spouse that. You don't have to tell your mom or dad that. Brother or sister. You don't have to tell Tim. You don't have to tell anybody. Or whoever your pastor might be if you go somewhere else. But look at yourself and and examine yourself. And if you're not where you need to be, trust in God like this says and, and call out to him. He's going to hear you. But I, I've, I've run out of time, but I love you all. God bless you.